G'day farmers and welcome to Farming Simulator 2022 and welcome to the absolutely stunning and well thought out map Court Farms by Oxygen David. Huge shout out to him. I am starting off from scratch so that means it's on the hard difficulty. I have the lease to own mods among others which will allow me to buy the equipment or vehicles after leasing them. So I've leased pretty much 99% of all my equipment you'll see in this episode and in the future until you actually see me purchase or lease more. But every time I lease something, I have to own it. This is going to be all about animals. But not just that, I'm also going to try and get into the production side of things. But I'll go over the animals very quickly as we're walking down here into our farm that we have previously bought at the start of this season. So from our house, literally right next to the pigs, we've got the rabbits, which just eat the hay, and they are going to be absolutely fantastic. Moving on to the chickens, they do not require water. It's just the wheat or grains. I plan to use the wheat, obviously, and that's where these are right here. Very easy to maintain, and they produce the eggs that I plan to make cakes. So make sure you stick around. I will be getting into that very shortly. The sheep pasture, I will definitely be getting stuck into because they are literally the most productive and most money you get out of it from what you put in. So I'll be getting wool out of this and I can make that into clothing with the tailor and the spinnery, etc, etc, as well as only give them and feed them water and hay. That's all they'll need. They're very simple. The cows, I have probably done the most research on at the present moment. If I just jump over here and give you a proper look. They produce so much that I have planned for, and I'll just cover it very, very quickly. But the cows will produce milk, manure, and slurry. I'm going to originally buy some silage for the first month to try and bump up their TMR scale. So I might have to get a mixer but I can sell the manure and perhaps make it into digestate. I'll be using the slurry as fertilizer and I do have precision farming on, so I will need to worry about the fertilizer state, the percentage, the values, as well as lime, etc., etc., as well as soil sampling that we'll get into this episode. But on top of that, they mainly produce the milk, which is what I want. It's roughly 120 to 150 liters per cow per month around the 12 month old age of the cow. So that's roughly what I'm kind of expecting to get out of it, to give them a roughly 350 liters of TMR per month. Finally onto the pig pen, they are actually going to be somewhat easier than you think to manage. So these are also going to work well with the bees and you're like, huh? What's that mean? So hopefully the range on where I'm putting the bees just over there will reach this field that I plan to plow, cultivate, etc, etc, and plant in canola if I can to then use it to feed them as well as other things like create seed from it. I'll try and place a seed cell point down, which is a mod, but we'll get into that at a later stage. Also, very quick note, when you buy them, they do not show they need straw or if they produce slurry or manure. So I'm not sure if it's been added on this map, but it may in the future, which we'll get right on top of. All right, moving on to the very last one would be the horses. And this is a dilly of a pickle. There's a lot to do with them. I'll cover it very quickly, but you can sell them for profit depending on how you look after them. So what I mean by that is that there's a positive or a negative, which means they can be rideable and they need to be ridden every month a certain amount for them to actually get that bonus, as well as having to need to be clean. So that means brushing them or combing them, just going up to them and left clicking on all your horses will bring that cleanliness back up to it. Now, with all these animals said, I want this to be as self-sustaining as possible, which is why if we go into the map right here, I've bought field 26 right here. If I go here so you can look at the 
sort of things I've got and how much I did pay for it, it will show that it's completely grass. So I'll be turning that to hay and silage for all the animals and the TMR for the cows as I don't want to feed them anything else other than that TMR and the rest can have hay. The wheat can go to the chickens and temporarily to the pigs as well as possibly shop food as it's not really expensive at like $900 for a thousand litres. As well on top of that we will get into the next episode and harvest this field of wheat which should give us some nice profit and a little bit of money but we've also got two contracts I'll have to do in maybe separate episodes because some people say they do, some people say they don't like these sorts of things and I'm pretty sure it was on field 31 and 177 so we'll just go to the contracts very quickly. Field 1 and field 32 for those two contracts nice and simply because they're flashing. I have checked if they are going to expire before trying to get all my fields done first. And I've skipped to December in winter because I do have the seasons mod on. One day per month roughly at the moment which is why I'm going to try and fit as much as I can in this month. But we'll see how it goes. I may have to change that to two days per month. But before we get sidetracked anymore we'll get into the production buildings on what I really want to get stuck on. And I'm probably showing some sort of spreadsheet to try and lay this out as simply as possible. But I want greenhouses, they'll provide strawberries, which is an ingredient for cakes. You'll hear that word a lot, just wait. We'll need the grain mill, which is 122 grand on this map. And that takes all the grains, so wheat, oat, barley, sorghum, and that produces all those types of flowers, which can be turned into bread and obviously cake, once again. The sugar mill is 80K, and that is placeable. That will take in obviously the sugar cane and the sugar beet and will produce the sugar for the cake and the chocolate I plan to maybe make depending on when we get what. The bakery is going to be the biggest thing and that's on this map at 56 grand. It's pretty cheap and it takes in flour to make bread but it also takes in flour, milk, butter, sugar, eggs and strawberries to make those cakes which is the most profitable and hardest item you can find in this game at the present moment without a mod. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can correct me in the bottom on which mod would most likely be difficult as I'd be kind of curious to see and test that one out maybe in a future season or something. So to top things off I want to get stuck into all the animals possible. I want to get stuck into mainly cakes in the production industry kind of side of things as we can do that very well and look after the animals at the same time. Self-sustaining farm, production chains, Google spreadsheets, the numbers, the mathematics, all that sorts of stuff I'll be sharing with you as I have previously kind of already given you a hint on of the cows with their feed ratio and their milk production. So I want to try and get all of those animals, including those bees, except for the pigs and the chickens, as I'll need to harvest my wheat field for me to feed them and get that, which I can do in the next episode. All right, as you see, we can bring our hut up so we can show everything. We're starting with seasons, obviously, in August. The weather is not looking too bad all day, which is fantastic for us because we have two grass fields to mow and hay and silage and bale up and all that sorts of stuff. One for ourselves for feed, one for a contract, which we may get a little, little something, something of hay out of it, which would help great deal, as well as having to harvest two fields, one of wheat, which is ours, and one of oat, which I plan to feed the horses, which was fantastic and so lucky I got those two contracts. All right, first things first, I need to get some soil sampling done in our Massey Ferguson. This thing is an absolute monster and I am loving it so far. So let's push a button to start it up, which is that one right there. As you can see on my cam, it is not going to be a face cam that I know of for the fact that I'll probably break it and um, I don't know, I may hurt your eyes with my face. Uh, let's get on to actually planting one of these right here. So the reason why I need to do this, so let's unfold it and lower it. 
without doing it just yet. To get our environmental score up, I need to actually scan this field as well. Otherwise, if I go into the environmental score, the soil sampling that I have for the two fields when I get to them, one here and one here, I will not get a proper environmental score if I do not soil sample the one available on my farm. Or the one I plan to plant canola over here with the 5% increase from using the bees. That's yield, by the way. 5% yield increase from using the bees after in a few episodes. So we'll get to that very, very shortly. So let's go ahead and plant one right here. So that'll be one. We'll drive over to our grass field and then go over to our wheat field and get them done also. So let's fold this bad boy up. Nice and safe. We don't want to break anything. Awesome. All right, let's get moving. Uh, I do have indicator. Haha. -ha. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure I go up here. Good. That auto indicator off mod actually does work, which is fantastic. So I do have auto play, which I could be using, but I don't want to have to pay the worker wages. So let's just make sure we go on the right way. Yep. First left. I thought so. And we can give a look at the expected yield sorts of things that we're going to get, hopefully, as the farmer that owned these two, previ these two previous fields told me he did look after them extremely well. Hopefully we turn down the right one. Yep. He did look after them extremely well, so we'll find out if he was telling the truth or not by going there right now. This thing looks so nice. There's so much. Just wish I could, like, push buttons. 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 Give me all the buttons. I like buttons. Oh, and we drove past our field. My bad. Big butt coming through. Uh-oh. Bigger butt incoming. We're good. Oh, fence. Ooh, here we are. This looks correct. Yeah. Open sesame. So I'm guessing this is the one right here. Wow. Hopefully this will provide enough. Let's see what sort of yields and stuff we're going to get. Because I do have additional field info mod as well. Just to allow me to see visually the sorts of numbers expected. So we've got 12,163 and it does not seem to have any lime or fertilizer on it. That cheap son of a gun. Uh, well, at least I did plan on that and um, I do need to plant those samples. So let's get all of this. Let's go out and let's have a look at it from over here. Buttons. So I need to reverse up just a smidge, just to make sure we get all of our field. And then I'll press the B button, as I haven't mapped that one out. How many times will we need to soil sample? There we go, there's one. Unfortunately, it collects the one next to us as well, which is, I guess, if we buy that field in the future, it could save us a bit. Which is a lot of grass there, so it may not be the worst idea, to be honest. Right. Look at all that grass. Nom 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 nom. All right, there we go. There's another one. Oh, and then we got a little bit more. There we go. I will not send off the soil samples just yet, as I'd like to get the other wheat field done as well at the same time. Um, I will leave that fence open because we definitely need to do that job first and get some hay on the mar. We need to drive all the way pretty much to the shop and you may see some more equipment down there that we haven't even seen before yet. Uh, and that's for one of the contracts to bale up one of those grass fields, which I think was field 32. Field one was for the oats. Here we go. There's the shop on the right, but funny enough, we're turning on the left, I mean, uh, we're turning right. Sharpie knows his lefts and rights. Yep. Yep-a-roo. 
And the best thing about this one is that, oh look, we see wheat. Dun, 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 we're here. Sweet. Cool means. Boop. And I will need to close this gate afterwards as well, just in case. Oh, I got one thing. Yes, I do have crop destruction on. So I'll just go to the settings very quickly. So yes, obviously seasonal growth, one day per month, no fixed visual month. And I may turn the snow off because apparently it just disappears like that. Crop destruction, periodic plowing, field stones and weeds have all been turned on as well as the hard difficulty. So, yep, let's get back onto this one and let's field sample this up. So he's probably done the same thing, yeah. That darn farmer I bought these fields from, he didn't even lime or fertilize them. But I guess it is worth the investment, even if I get like an extra 4,000, 5,000 liters or something like that, especially with the grass. So I do have narrow tires on talking about that crop destruction. I definitely paid a little bit extra as well as getting jumping up jumping up the top i did get the isaria pro that helps us with the fertilization and liming rate so we can get to 100 percent nice and easy and efficiently and without wasting time i also paid a little bit extra 15 grand as well for both of these roughly to get the gps just so i can have a little bit of fun and because I have OCD, so yeah, accurate things are nice. All right, let's get to doing this one. Unfold, go down. Meows, 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 meows. Nice. Cool beans. Now that that's all done, let's press the Y button and OK to send that all for analysis and get that up and running. It usually takes about 5-10 seconds ish. Maybe because there's just a few more. Close the git. We'll get back to that field another time. Yes, I am a FPS shooter type person, so if I'm moving the mouse like too fast Please let me know ASAP, like I just did then. I do apologize for that. Um, as I will try and take it slower, or I can plug in a Xbox controller just for the movement type thing in player. Just let me know in the comments below. So what we can do right now is, while I'm down here, is I'm going to cut right over here and go and pick up our lime and fertilizer spread up. So see, now we now have 15 out of 15 for the soil sampling because we did our field, this one over here, and this one over here, which included all the fields that we actually own, including our little garden near our house just there. Yes, I did say we're only gonna keep, so let's just, oh no, drop it there and I guess pay it off when we can. Faster the better. Pat, 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 pat. Uh, excuse me, dude. Big bite coming through. Do you mind? How rude. Here we go. So you may be wondering, why did I get this one? And the reason why I got this is for the fact that it takes lime and it takes fertilizer, which is fantastic. Plus it actually has an upgradable back end. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and fill these big boys up. Which I have gone ahead of time and bought a lot of things. So let's get this fertilizer in. Fertilizer ain't cheap, which is why we have the cows as well. So I've also got a bag handler. So let's just go over to this field very quickly, fertilize it up, see how much fertilizer we need and see if we need to buy any more or not. Note to self, don't close gate unless you know you're not coming back. Uh, let's see if we can get in position. We are not destroying any crops. No, that is fantastic. Narrow wheels on the fertilizer spreader as well. Really does make a difference. Let's see if we have enough to reach both sides. Nope. So I'm going to have to move over here a lot. Thought I was going to have enough. That's right, we'll have to fix that up ASAP. Can't have any spots missed. 
Oh yes, this 300 horsepower in this tractor does wonders. Oh no, I missed a bit. Not allowed. Thank you. It won't apply any unless it needs to, which is really good about this Azaria Pro, and that's why I got it. Brilliant. All done. And that only used roughly like 10% or something. I think we were at 44% before, so that's actually really good. So let's go back, dump this off, swap it over the lime, and do the exact same thing. And then we'll need to do the grass field also. All right. I need lime. That's the one. Thank you very much. Whee! All right, so what we need to do is we need to go over here and do two passes, unfortunately. And right down the middle. If it doesn't need fertilizer to be down, it won't spray it down. Beautiful. I love this thing. It's so efficient. It's so time and money saving. It is crazy. Just got to get used to all these tools. That's all. Here we go. Let's get on out. And have a look at our field now. Look at that. It went from like the 60% to 125%. Just because we upgraded the nitrogen and the pH, so we limed it and fertilized it, we just probably increased it by like a good, I don't know, 60, 65%, something like that. That is absolutely fantastic to hear, and we will see this field in a future episode. Don't you worry about that. I'm super excited to get those chickens on. Looking up my posterior. Let's get going. And I'll probably top this up with some more lime go over to our grass field and do the exact same thing on both of them and then we'll need to get to cutting and baling all that stuff so back at the shop let's just pick up this bag handler and pick up two bags of fertilizer select the right tool let's see if we can back it up back it up just a smidge there we go let's get some more lime and then I should pick up these two bags now, to be honest, while I get the chance. So we might as well just fill everything up we can, and then just drop everything back at our farm. Once we're done with it, which will be fantastic. We've got two more bags of seed and one more bag of fertilizer, which I'll grab that fertilizer, we'll grab that uh, seed whenever we can. There we go. So I'll just swing around and I'll just grab that other bag. So I'll have to come in quite tight on this one, I think. There we go. Awesome. Not cars. Look at this. I'm not pushing any buttons. Indicator off. Lava. That mod is brilliant. You don't have to click the button twice. So that's one less click you have to hear. So let me know if any of my keyboard or even the steering wheel or mouse or whatever it may be, just a little bit too off. I can change it. Nice and simple. Cool. Let's get on over and get this second field done. And then we can mow it up, bale it up, and get some food on the way for the animals. There we go. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll dump... Those two right there. Yep, awesome. Just back it on up a little bit. And let's fertilize and lime this. So what do we got on this one again? We've got... Not too bad, not too bad. So we've got a bit of lime, a bit of nitrogen. So we've got 12, 160. Let's go. Just missed this little bit down the middle. Doesn't that look so cool? All right, I'm kind of thinking I may even drop this back at the farm just so I don't have to worry about trying to bring the weird style pallets. Here's home. Just to drop this extra bit of lime off that we won't need until we need to fertilize and plow that field and lime, obviously. 
What I'm going to do is go ahead and dump all of this stuff over here where I'm going to be using it anyway. So let's see if I can get it up somewhat close-ish to the edge of the road. Right about here. That sounds good. Just three pallets right there. Cool beans, let's head back to the grass field, fertilize that up, and then we'll need to go and cut it and bale it. In the future, I will be paying for maintenance on shrubbery around fields when using my harvester, just so it enables me to get it into the field a lot easier without having to worry. So let's get one of these fertilizer bags in here quickly. I'm not going to do it this time, but I will be doing the kind of maintenance side of things as well, just to make it more fair. So let's get this on going. And I think this one's just got a bit big of a spread range, too. Let's see if I can collect this bag. There we go. And then... Any other little bits I've missed? Nah. Cool bananas. All right, I'll just do a big UE in this field. I'm sure the owner won't mind as I have narrow tracks on and I wouldn't destroy his field anyway. Not like I'm doing donuts. All right. So since we'll be coming back here very shortly, let's cut on out of here. Nice and easy. And let's go get that mower, drop this bag off and get all that done. All right, so let's drop the rest of this fertilizer off in the same spot as where I've got the lime. Right in here. And then I, cool. I'll go drop this big bag off over the other side over here, just for the fact that it's out of the way. I can move it around much easier. And I'm probably going to leave that, like, right about here, I think. Just out of the way. Yeah, just there. Sounds perfect. And then I'm going to drop this bag handler off. Yeah, I'm not going to the shop anytime soon, so that should be fine. There we go. That'll do swap tools. Quite fine. Good, good, good. All right, let's go pick up. There's the um, direct drill, which saves the plowing, cultivating, etc., etc. I'll explain when we get to it in a future episode. I got my weight in a bucket, a universal bucket, thousand liters, something nice and simple. So here we have our mower, which if I get out, I can show you, I can usually link up this mower to this with this telehandler arm on. So let me just test that without it being weird. All right, so now I want to get this bad boy here as I've got a little, am I stuck? I'm stuck. Because I've got a little trick up my sleeve. So I want to be able to cut the grass I'm going to windrow the grass straight away without turning it into hay. And then I'm going to get 50% of it, roughly, with the forage harvester and put it into the silo and compact it and turn it into silage for the TMR. But then I'm also going to collect all the grass with the forage harvester and then I'm going to dump it on that field just over there so my baler can collect it all up. Doing that, it's adding an extra 5% yield onto the grass itself because I'm using that silage additive and that's the reason why I got that forage harvester itself that forager sorry whatever it's called I can't remember it's been a while since I've played this game last time it would have been 2017 and 2019 which I actually do have access to all of those save files and it was an absolute blast from the past when I visited them. It was really fun, to be honest. All right, let's get the right camera for what we need. And the best thing about this is because I've got the steering wheel, I've actually bound the keys, so it should lower everything. At the same time, roughly. And lower. 
Yeah. And then all tools on. Here we go. Let's see what we can get. Yes, I do have the Dusty Lands mod on, and that's why you see all the smoke and the stuff from the, the grass. If it's too much, let me know as well. I can always change things. Getting a little better. Don't forget, we also get the extra 5% on top that I've somewhat tested out, as well as many, many, many other things. There we go, just about done. I might be able to get just a smidge more grass from an emergency place I have in mind, but stay tuned. That may be in another episode, but let's get all this raised up and fold it away, and let's get on Balin. So let's go get the forager to pick everything up and bring it all back and gain that 5% yield increase. So let's go drop all of this off in their respective spots. So I'm just going to hook it around here and then reverse this thing straight back in. And then I need to go and slot this in here like that. And select the right thing like that. Beautiful. Cool. Let's get the forage harvester to pick all this up. And I've already got the silage additive added in to save a bit of time. Here we go. As you see, we've got 10 litres right there, 100%. Let's go get all the grass, bring it on back. Bail it up, silage it up. Good to grow. Here we have all our beautiful grass. Let's get doing. Let's lower that. Get that thing turned on. You don't have access to this land. I do on this land though. Here we go. Let's see what we sort of get on numbers because that will depend on what I can really feed them and how much, etc. So I need roughly 4,000 of hay and 4,000 of silage and then the straw will get from the wheat field which I'll probably need about 3,500 of that and that goes into a 11,900 litre horn night something or other uh, mixer feeder wagon thing so very worthwhile we are actually not getting too bad out of this Well, there we go. We're now full. That's perfect. Let's go back and dump, let's say 12, maybe 13. So we'll do at least half of this as silage. Maybe a little bit more because we don't need grass for anything. Really got to cut it out here and cut it in and look at the floor. Yep. So after all that, we only used 0.7 litres of that silage additive, and I think that's like 3,800 or something like that, for however much it is in litres, but that really goes a far way, and for an extra 5% yield increase on top of whatever we're already getting on that field is just, you just can't miss it, you can't go past it. Here we go. So we'll go ahead and dump 50% of this, roughly, maybe a little bit more, uh, into the silage pit just over here. And then we will dump the rest of it onto the field behind us, where I plan to plant that canola. So we can start baling that up after tedding it. So we'll ted it and then we'll compact this one. A little bit more maybe nah there's 8,000 there should be plenty in there so we'll drive this out 
and then we'll just run over and check so we got 15,000 I'm very happy with that number that should be plenty of TMR in the next month and the reason why I'm using the bio, the silage bunker and not wrapping them is because I'll be saving money on not having to buy a specific wrapper and also because using the silage bunker shortens the time it takes to do that by one month Here we go. So let's go pick up the rest of it. All right, let's get the rest of this done. Let's lower it. Thank you, and turn it on. And let's get the rest of this stuff. How much extra have we got? It's about as much grass as I am capably able to get. So let's book it. Back to everything, turn it off, lower it up. Oh, raise it up, that's the word. Here we go. Let's head back to the farm, dump this like the other one, and bail it up pronto. Get some animals up in here, and feed them all. I am super excited to finally get these animals and this season up and running. Super keen. Back at home, and that is one big swath. Which I will have to ted up, which is fine. So let's... Go ahead and dump this. Beauty. So you get quite a decent amount from all that. And I'm going to put this forager into the other barn, the one just over there. So I'll just get this in here. There we go. Bit too far. That's fine. Awesome. All right, let's get that baler from the other barn. In the cab is much easier to do this. Uh, where are we? Baila, baila, baila. Oh, that kind of sucks. I thought I actually had a baila. That's all right. I do know which one I need, and you can actually see the least to own mod in action. So the balers, I will be going with this strange 120 square bale size, and they just work perfectly for what. I want. So it's 22000 It's going to cost us $1,122 plus all that for the work day, the work hour, all that stuff. So let me go pick that up and I'll show you how it all works. So I need to drive down to the shop and come on back. So giddy up. There we go. Pick up the baler. Let's head back to the farm. All right. Now that we've got the tether and we've got everything done, let's get this tethered up and turned into hay, shall we? And this tether should do fine, I'm thinking. It's a bit small, but it shall do the trick, I think. Very nice. Missed a little bit of grass just here. So I'll get that nice and quick. Good. Alright, so while that's drying out, nice and quickly in this August sun, let's get this thing away. Get this one away, like so. And then I need to compact this silo as it's only grass at the moment. So it's only compacting 1%, 15,047. Let's see what we end up with. Let's get onto it. So up and on. Might even be good to chuck my tractor weight on, to be honest for the little extra weight and speed, which is just here. 99, 100. Perfecto mundo, I like it. So at 9.16 next month, AKA tomorrow, this will have been silage as it only takes one month so 24 hours aka one month in this game or whatever it is if you are to cover and wrap your bales i hear it takes two months and i cannot wait that long so that's done that's all good and true all right let's see how much we get
Here they come pumping out. It's a beautiful sight. We'll come by and do another pass. So weird having to do grass like this, but I wanted to do something a little different and an extra 5% yield on a very beginning like this is just unpassable. Just a little bit of here, a little bit of there. Up and over, should be all right. Got it. And then let's press Y to dump them all out. I've got 37% left over, which I'm more than happy with turning into hay. Now that we've bailed up all our hay, we finally get the numbers on what we could actually do from that field. And what we got was actually quite surprising. I got not one, but two loads of full TMR, which is about 12,000 litres total, using 4,200 hay. 4,200 silage and 3,500 straw with no mineral feed whatsoever as it does not provide any benefit whatsoever. On the second hand, we did also get an extra six bales of hay, which is absolutely fantastic, which we then can spread against all the animals that we will eventually have. Talking of which, with the close to eight and a half thousand dollary dues that we do have i would like to get at least two of each animal depending on prices and all that sorts of stuff and i've got them all written down here on what i want so the way i've worked it out is that i'll probably get one brown swiss and one holstein which are both milk cows and are both 12 months old each the reason why i'm going for the 12 month old is for the fact that I'd really like it to produce the manure, the slurry, but most importantly, the milk. As I said at the start, it's roughly 120 to 150 litres per month per cow production. While they take in roughly 350 litres of TMR or hay, depending on your difficulty type. So obviously I'm in hard, those are the numbers that we're going to be running with. It's roughly what I'm going to be trying testing to see if it's correct or not. So as we select it, you may see the fee for the transport. And I've worked it out. Unless you're buying a lot of horses, you need to buy at least 10 or so of each animal for it to even be worth me leasing or even buying that transport for the animals for the fact that I'd have to keep it. It's a lease to own playthrough. That's what I'm going to have to do. I can't just give it back to the store because I don't want it. I'd have to keep it till I used it next year or so. So that'd be no point whatsoever. We're going to spend 1180 on that one for a Holstein and another 1180 on a brown Swiss. The production on both of these in terms of what they do is not really much different. The next one I would like to move on to are the sheep. These are going to obviously produce the wool. They're going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm going once again straight for the eight month old ones for the fact I want them to produce all the stuff at their max potential. So it's just the most efficient, most cost wise that can be done. So once again, we'll just get two of those. We'll definitely be buying a hell of a lot more than this in the coming episodes. We're just a little shy on money at the moment. So the pigs and the chickens, we will definitely be getting when, once we've harvested our wheat field and we'll be getting the horses once we harvest that contracted oats field. So hopefully we'll get a little something something out of it. So rabbits, once again, they're zero month old, but they are adult rabbits. Baby rabbits, I'm not too sure. I think they're their own separate breed and will still produce babies on top of that, but I could be wrong. I'm going with the rabbit and I will be buying quite a few of them. I'll probably buy, we can have 30 in here. So let's see if we can get 15 of them. That's perfectly fine. And we'll buy 15 of those. Awesome sauce. So we've got $3,485 dues left. There we go. Now that the rabbits have been finished up, I need to go ahead and feed them, which we can do that as soon as we can 
when we start in the next episode. So we'll feed them the hay. We'll try and get some TMR in for the cows, depending how much dullery dues we have by the end of it. It's roughly going to be 18 to 20 thousand dollars per month for all the leasing and the bank loan that we have. I'm sure I'm forgetting lots of stuff, but make sure you stick around for all the coming episodes. It's going to be super insane. This map has got so much to answer for and to offer. It's incredible. Stay sharp till next time. See ya.